It's a Westgate Red 9 top tip. How do you search for objects within the UI? Let's find out. Within Red, go to Edit and click on Search for String. Now, you can search for anything across the whole data warehouse. So first of all, you type the string that you're looking for. You can match cases by using the toggle bot. Then you have the option to search for procedures, scripts, and tables. And this doesn't just do the individual objects, but it could also search for anything within the scripts. Click on Search and it will return all of the objects and the number of times that word or that search term has been found inside of the script. Absolutely fantastic for if you need to look for a particular term inside of a script or procedure, or if you're looking for a particular table name somewhere in your data warehouse. Did you know it's possible to see the last SQL executed from the UI? Let's find out how. Go to view, go to last SQL, and in here you can see the last SQL statement executed, the one before that, and the one before that. You also get error messages, so if any of this SQL has produced an error, you'll be able to see what the target platform has returned. And then any of these options can be copied and pasted out, and you can use it externally. So how do we get this data? Let's try simply rebuilding a load table. And if we go back to view last SQL, you can see the load table SQL statement has been created for us. At this point, you can copy out the SQL statement, move it into a separate tool and experiment. It's possible to launch host scripts directly from the UI. Let's find out how we can do that. First of all, we need to ensure you have a host script that will operate. Ensure this is either a uh, PowerShell or a JavaScript or a Python script, something that you can run on your UI. In this script, we've got a simple hello world pop-up. Now to configure this to work from the UI, we have to include this in the script launcher toolbar. So right mouse button on the menu bar, click on script launcher. From here, you can click on script launcher, click on configuration. You'll have a list that you can configure. The first thing I'm going to do is give this a title and then I'm going to select the script that I want to use. And in this case, I'm using my hello world host script. So you click on OK to confirm that configuration. And the next time you click on script launcher, you'll see your option. We click on that, we get hello world and we've now configured our host script to work from the menu bar. Did you know you can use the UI to query the data warehouse? Let's find out how. Within your data warehouse, House, go to validate and click on query data warehouse objects. In here you can write the query to interact with your target platform and use the right syntax for that target platform. So for instance we're using SQL Server in this example so I'd use standard SQL. Now whenever you're running queries you're going to have to ensure that you interact with those objects in the right way. So for here in this example I've not used the schema for where the object exists so I now need to put in the schema, run query again. You can control the number of records that are returned. So if you only want to see the top 10, it will bring in the top 10. You can also interact with the report tab independently of the query. So if you ever want to add in particular where clauses to test the data in more granular detail. Did you know it's possible to version all of the objects in the data warehouse and revert an object back to a previous version? Let's find out how. Within Wearscape 3D, navigate to a particular object, right mouse button on that object, go down to version control and click new version. You can provide a short description and a long detailed description and you can associate all the versions with any procedures and scripts. You can also set a time that this version will be retained for. Alternatively, you can go to tools, version objects, and this is going to be the version for everything. And once you've done here, you can version the entire warehouse by clicking this button here, or you can ver version by a project by selecting the project and clicking on version projects. Now, if you ever want to revert a version, you go to the object, object, right mouse button and go back to version control. And from here, you can use the option revert to version. You can select the version that you want to make and then click on create. The object will be reverted back to the selected version. How do you structure your groups and projects? How do you make it so that everyone knows where things are, what things mean? Let's go through a simple example. In my warehouse, I already have lots of objects grouped by area types. I have my raw vault, I have my business vault objects, and then of course I've got all of my objects. I may wish to start organizing this into slightly different ways. I may wish to create a new group for source systems. Now, if I have lots and lots of source systems, I may want to add in different different groups to group all of my
my metadata by source systems. And within that, I may then have things like my source system. And inside of this, I may want to add in my objects. And I can do that simply by going down to right mouse button on the object and going to project maintenance. And then from here, I can pick up all of my objects that belong to that particular source system. I might want to create a new group for my development activity. So I may call this projects. Now in here, I may wish to create different groups inside of it for my JIRA tickets that I can start to track who is adding in objects and why they might be doing what they're doing. So it helps form some loose connection between the activity in my warehouse to my ticket management system. The other thing I may wish to do is add in one for the end user documentation. And in here, I may want to create subsets of uh, data around my business vault, my raw vault. Now I can move existing projects into these folders by simply dragging and dropping. And now I have moved all of the existing projects into a, a nice group. Now these groups can be reordered and I suggest you do this so it's quite chronological. So we can have sources at 101. We may want to rename the group so that projects are next. And we may want to rename our group so that documentation is right at the end. And of course, the last thing we may wish to do is we may wish to create a release group, which will help control all of the objects as they're released. Creating a release group and then adding in a project. And then inside of that particular uh, project, I would add in all of my projects that are released as part of that particular release application. Additional things that you'll be able to do from here, uh, on each of the projects and groups, you'll be able to create or start different activities like building applications or release files or jobs. So when you're building your metadata, make sure you've organized it in a way that's easy for other people to read and then helps to group your objects into useful groups for other purposes. Job naming conventions. How do you make sure your jobs are easy to understand and follow, that other people can understand what they do and when they should run? Let's go through a few examples to give you an idea of best practice. So in our Wearscape Red repository, we'll navigate to the scheduler. We've named our jobs based on the phases of processing. So we've grouped all our load jobs into the 010 job. We create a stage job that's going to have all our stage processing. And then finally, we process all our raw vault objects in the final stage. Now, this is ideal when you're processing your entire warehouse en masse and you can set dependencies between the jobs so you can ensure that the stage job does not start before the load has completed. Now, this is really good if you're dealing with everything en masse. The alternative you could have for, say, a raw vault is you may wish to process one raw vault object or one set of raw vault objects concurrently. In this case, you would create a set of jobs for each stream of processing. So in this case, activities. And then we would create another job with a dependency on the first job. And in here, we would then start to process our activity stages. And finally, our raw vault objects. So providing you follow this naming convention, you're able to either process your entire warehouse en masse or process sections of your warehouse and be able to process multiple sections concurrently. The naming convention gives you an idea of processing order. Using this naming convention gives you the ability to order the jobs sequentially using a number. Then you can process a particular area of your data warehouse and then you can break it down further again by the subsections as we did with the activities job in this example. Documentation. How do you build documentation and how can you create subsets of documentations? Let's find out. Within Red, go to the documentation menu and then click on create documentation. From here, you can click on all objects to document your entire warehouse. You can specify the folder that you export the documentation from. And then in here, you can give it names and set the colors and the formatting and you can replace style sheets. And here's the documentation. We can navigate around all objects in the repository, navigating through your hubs, links, and satellites. Now, if we just want to document our raw vault, we can go to documents, create documentation. This time, rather than clicking all objects, we can select the project, and this will produce documentation for the entire project. As you can now see, the documentation has been updated to the raw vault and I can now navigate through the raw vault objects, uh, which is just the subset of the entire warehouse. How do you check the scheduler status? Well, in Wearscape Red 9, this is how you can do it. Within Wearscape Red, navigate to the scheduler tab. Along the menu bar, you'll see 
the scheduler status, click on this, and then down the bottom, you'll see a list of all the schedulers connected to the repository and their current status. Sometimes you may have tables that don't have procedures. How do you find out what tables don't have procedures? Let's find out. Within the Wearscape Red repository, navigate to one of your tables. Now, if you delete the table, but you don't delete the metadata for the procedure, you would have removed the table, but left the procedure in the procedures. There it is. This is quite a difficult thing to do on a procedure by procedure basis. Alternatively, you can go to validate, list procedures not related to a table, and you'll see all the procedures that are not connected to the tables. Now this will include procedures that are custom. So if you are using procedures for other things such as emails or other functionality, you will have to enforce a naming convention to separate procedures that are connected to the tables and procedures that are meant for other purposes. Sometimes you may have tables that don't have procedures. How do you find out what tables don't have procedures? Let's find out. Go to validate and go down to list tables without related procedures or scripts. In the reports tab, you'll see the objects that don't have any procedures. So you can navigate to that object, double click, and you can see there is no procedure. And at this point, you can rebuild. And as you can see, the table no longer exists in the report.